The 2022 Motul FIM Superbike World Championship was a season to remember for countless reasons. From the first lights out to the final chequered flag, there was history right the way through as a new champion emerged. In one of the most spectacular three-way rivalries ever seen in motorcycle racing, the story has only just begun. Ahead of a new season of racing, there was a spectacular way to start the new year. High in the Italian Dolomites in Madonna di Campiglio, Ducati launched their 2023 challenge with an event full of glitz and glam. The world's media descended through the snowy ski slopes as the riders made their way to the unveiling to find out the question we'd all wanted to know. Would Alvaro Bautista use the number one in 2023? The answer was an emphatic yes. We caught up with Ducati CEO Claudio Domenicali as he conveyed his emotions ahead of a prosperous new year. Yeah, it's very, very emotional. Uh, actually, there is nothing that you can buy uh, on that. It's only a result of hard work. Um, so we are super proud. The engine, especially of the new R, uh, have some component uh, like the connecting road, the piston, that are very sexy, I would say. <laughs> uh, very kind of uh, high piece of engineering. And that should um, help to get a little bit of extra performance. I'm working in a company since uh, more than 30 years. So uh, I've been grown uh, in, the, in the year of uh, Superbike uh, with Carl Fogarty. I think that today, uh, when we lift the cover of the bike, uh, um, it's a piece of the history. I think we can expect uh, uh, a lot of good racing and um, more of the same, uh, I hope. Ducati Sporting Director Paolo Ciabatti is also hopeful of more success and vows to hold on to the number one plate for as long as possible. Alvaro is really full, uh, full very confident in full form. He knows very well that uh, for sure probably the usual suspect uh, Toprak and, and, and Johnny will be his main rivals, but we also have a good expectation that uh, Michael can do that little step. He needs, obviously, to be able to be fighting for, for the podium and uh, for race wins, uh, because this is what we expect from factory riders. Number one means everything, it means you are the champion. We are champions, this is why we call this event Campioni in Pista, and we'll try to keep it as much as we can on the fairings for the following seasons. As for the reigning world champion, Alvaro Bautista was proud to don the number one and looked back fondly on his first memories of World Superbike and following in the footsteps of legends. I choose the, the number one for 2023 because uh, it's like a personal challenge, no? you know, when, when you have the number one in the bike, uh, the only result is uh, to win. My first memory with the, uh, watching the World Superbike in a Ducati is Ducati with the number one, no? so I'm so proud to, to have this number. Every year will be more and more difficult, so we have to be 
very focused, very concentrated. You have to keep this uh, this working, try to, to keep this focus and, and try to improve because otherwise uh, we cannot fight for, for the top. No, So we have to just uh, head down and just work. With a new number comes a new hairstyle. Alvaro Bautista has dropped the perm, but why? New year, new hair. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, I, I like a lot to, to play with my, with my hair and this time, before this season, I will uh, have uh, short. So I hope to, to have good feeling also with the, this, uh, this hair. <laughs> Aruba.it Racing Ducati team principal Stefano Ciccone also spoke of the number one, but stated that defending it will also be a challenge. We are very excited. We, we feel a little bit of pressure because uh, everybody expected from us uh, to repeat the result we achieved in 2022. It uh, will not be easy, but we will give our best uh, to, to try it. Very pleasure to, to see the number one on our bike, uh, but every day it will remind us uh, how hard we have to work to keep it. So it will be at the same time a good memory, but uh, uh, a reminder as well. The calendar also features some quirks, but it's back to our traditional starting point. There'll be thunder down under as Phillip Island starts the season. It's back to back rounds in the first two weekends with Mandalika next as well. The European leg starts with the TT circuit Assen in the Netherlands whilst Barcelona and the Catalonia round find a new slot at the start of May. June opens in Italy at the iconic Rosano World Circuit Marco Simoncelli, whilst the great British round awaits in the heart of summer, Donington Park marks the halfway point. The fast and flowing autodrome Most hosts round seven in the Czech Republic, whilst Magni Kors follows after our summer break. Always a titanic round. Motorland Aragon comes two weeks later before Portimao follows to close off the European season. There's a new showdown host and it comes from South America. The Circuito San Juan Viacom in Argentina is the final round in October. Whilst one round is still to be confirmed elsewhere on the schedule. After 11 years, Ducati were back on top in 2022, but there's no time to rest. With an extravagant launch behind them, testing was soon underway, and Alvaro Bautista's first track action with the number one was in the history books. How will he make sure that it stays on the front of the bike from the close of this year? More than pressure, I feel confidence, no, because uh, I'm enjoyed with the bike, so let's uh, keep like this, no? Yeah, I think the, the new bike is definitely a step forward, especially with the engine, because I felt uh, more easy engine uh, to, to ride, uh, more smooth, more linear, so it helped me to, to be more consistent um, and maybe to force more in, in, in many places, no? So definitely, I think, has been a step forward. Well, for sure, uh, Every season is more and more difficult, no? And last year we were Toprak, Jonathan, and me who, who battled for the for the title. But this season uh, we we will have more riders in the fight. Alongside Bautista, getting ready for a third season in the factory Ducati team, Michael Ruben Rinaldi. The charismatic Italian was a race winner, but a winless campaign in 2022 is something he'll hope to correct in 2023, especially with his new training approach. I need a change, you know, if I want to fight for a better position, try to fight for the title. So I ask uh, my friend Ovizioso some uh, tips and uh, I change the uh, trainer. Now I train in a totally different way. Uh, I have the same trainer of Alvaro and he's the same trainer of Dovi. So yes, it's pretty tough because uh, I completely changed my daily routine. But uh, it's okay, it's okay. I don't uh, uh, mind if I sweat more or make more sacrifice if, if it pay off. So yeah, I change uh, this and uh, I will try my best to to do a better result during all the season. I can say uh, it's loud more than uh, last year. Uh, you never know because this championship has a huge level, but I'm not here to finish fourth. 
because uh, last year when I finished fourth, I wasn't happy. So yeah, I'm trying to, to fight for the title this year. Ducati Course World SBK Technical Coordinator Marco Zambenedetti knows the new Ducati Panigale V4R better than anyone. He gave us a lowdown on what's new for this year. The first uh, feedback from the riders uh, has been good. Both Alvaro and also here uh, Michael have seen the difference. The wingless has uh, a slightly increased downforce, uh, but uh, basically are uh, uh, well designed, a bit less of drag with the same or a slightly increased uh, downforce. We are uh, developing constantly uh, on the chassis side and also on the electronic side uh, to get a better performance. Like always with Ducati, there's a raft of strong independent riders, with one of the biggest names being double MotoGP Grand Prix winner Danilo Petrucci, who is aboard the Barney Racing Team Ducati. Then there's the best independent from 2022 and one of the coolest guys on the grid in Axel Bassani, ready to shine for a third year at Motocorsa Racing. After an impressive rookie season last year, Philip Ertel is back with Team Go 11 and has more top six finishes in his sights. We caught up with all of them about what they expect from the 2023 World Superbike season. I'm really, really happy to come back here in, uh, in Euro Racing in uh, World Championship. For sure, will be will be a great result if I'm able to win a race or uh, stand on the on the podium. Yeah, I think it's a uh, could be. I, I think this is a uh, could be a good target. I hope to stay with the, the top three guys all, all, on all the weekend, but uh, it's difficult because our free world champion. I, I won the first win. I, I did uh, uh, podium, second, third, but now I want to, to win, and I'm here for, for this. So we will see. Uh, to be honest, uh, to confirm the results from last year would be already quite good because uh, of the competition. And uh, well, then uh, then we see. Um, not every race is the same. Uh, of course, the top 10 is, uh, is the target. The reigning champions and the ones with the targets on their back, Ducati now face the challenge of living up to their expectation. Will Bautista remain the man to beat or is new blood coming good? Whatever the outcome, Ducati continue to push the envelope and are keen for their own golden era to start now. There's plenty of change at BMW. They'll be racing in black when the lights go out down under, but they have a new look to the M1000 Double R2. Innovative aerodynamical enhancements are obvious changes, as well as switching to Brembo brakes and becoming the first factory to use wheel covers in World SBK. Scott Redden hopes these changes can bring the package closer to the front. The target is to improve on last year for sure, so overall in the championship I need to see some improvement. Race by race I would like to get more podiums. It would be nice to be averagely closer, that we have more opportunity to, to fight for podiums. And you know when you fight for a podium you have a chance of winning. I want to make the package work to be there. You know we saw we were we was close sometimes but we just needed a little bit more. An injury hit 2022 for Michael van der Mark is now behind him and with a full testing program coming into 2023. Will the improvements be enough to see him back on the rostrum after missing out for the first time in his World Superbike career last year? We have to fight for podiums as, as soon as possible. Uh, that's our goal, but I think also this, this season the, the Superbike grid is strong, stronger than ever. Getting into this season without injuries uh, you know, makes it a lot easier. So. I'm looking forward to it and uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of battles on track. With all the new upgrades and podiums in 2022, BMW Motorrad Motorsport Director Mark Bongers was unequivocal about the German manufacturer's ambitions in 2023. Very obvious, obviously from the outside of course, the, uh, the aero package. Uh, behind which there's a couple of things uh, hidden. It will uh, increase our uh, top speed. Um, we have additionally homologated some uh, wheel covers, uh, which will even bring some more aero advantage. Besides that, it will give us advantages in the, on the cooling side. There's a few minor details uh, hidden underneath, which could bring us further improvements also in terms of uh, chassis. The super concession within the regulation, they are actually deleted once you bring a new homologation. So uh, we are not entitled anymore 
uh, for the 2023 season to use super concessions. Um, but what we had in terms of super concessions have been integrated into the 2023 base bike. In the third year of the M1000RR, the expectation is that we will win. There's a fresh feel with Bonovo Action BMW 2, who retained Loris Baz for a second season, whilst American star Garrett Gerloff moves to the team after three years on Yamaha machinery. Whilst Baz aims to get back to the top five, Gerloff is one of the biggest names with a new home for the season incoming. I think if we all work together in kind of a way that we can we can really solve some problems. So I've I've heard a lot of stuff about what these guys are struggling with, and and so far we've been able to kind of you know work our way into into some better better situations, some better areas with some of the issues. So uh, yeah, I think if we work together, we can we can really take this bike uh, up up the uh, the ranks. The bike d definitely improved uh, during the winter. The aero is better. Um, we have um, yeah different gearbox also which makes our life easier um, it's not day and night but yeah definitely a lot of imp small improvement i want to be on the podium i want to to win ra try to fight f to win races and uh, but yeah at the moment i mean we have to be um yeah realistic and starting like to fight for top five and uh, which we didn't get last year and uh, yeah we'll see uh, how much we can improve it during the season BMW have raised their game again in 2023 and have introduced new concepts to World Superbike. Now, they need them to translate into race wins. There are changes aplenty at Honda 2 who use their super concession to improve the geometry of the bike and also have an updated engine specification for more bottom end power. Japanese engineers are in attendance across both Jerez and Portimao tests as their rider lineup remains identical. Ike Laquona and Xavi Vierge fly the flag for Team HRC once more, and there's only one objective for both of them in 2023. With the super concession, we can try many new pieces on the bike. This is true, and this uh, for sure help us. The objective is to fight for a podio uh, every race, no, or even in the first group. We expected that uh, us improving is enough to uh, fight for a, for a championship. Into his second season of World SBK action, like his teammate, Xavi Vierge aims to conquer the Honda and the Rostrum. Without a podium in his maiden World Superbike campaign, can he right his rookie year wrongs? Yes, of course, uh, Honda is working so hard uh, already last year in the last races. We have uh, uh, the super concessions, you know, that we can play a little bit more with, with the bike. This uh, for sure will help us. The first objective of that year is try to fight for, for the podiums and let's see if we achieve that. Of course, we will want to, to win. That is the, our, our real objective. Going into his third season of team management and with Team HRC, Leon Camia remains at the helm and overseeing the Honda project. Can they finally take victory in 2023? Camille is hopeful, especially with their super concession dispensation. We've been working on pretty much every aspect of the bike, uh, engine, chassis uh, and electronics. So hopefully we can make another step this year. That's the plan. Predominantly with engine spec, you know, obviously we're looking to, to have the power where we want it. Obviously our bike is, is normally uh, the fastest in the speed traps. Um, but we're looking for something with a little bit more torque. With the, with the chassis side of things, predominantly uh, with the swing arm, yeah, looking for more grip on the edge of the tyre is, is one of the main things. Super concession we have is just more option of our geometry, basically, from our chassis. So pivot and head pipe position. The Japanese engineers predominantly are from R&D department um, and they're working on, yeah, on these changes that we've made with the bike. They're checking the engine, how it's performing. They're checking on the gear ratios, how, how this is affecting the, the performance on track. But they want to see firsthand what's going on on circuit and then yeah, go back to Japan and, and keep working on, on progress for the future. The MIE Racing Honda team are making steps in 2023 with vastly experienced former crew chief Mick Shanley being the team's technical director. There's also a partially new lineup which remains just as international. Malaysian Hapfi Shireen stays whilst there's a swap in South Americans. Argentinian Leandro Mercado isn't on the grid in 2023, but Brazilian rider Eric Granado readies for a first full year with Moto E World Cup race wins to his name. Both riders are keen to shine. It's amazing to be here, you know, many very fast riders and it's, it's good to be on the, on the list. And for sure it will be a tough year, difficult year for me, you know, rookie season, so many tracks I don't know, 
many things I don't know yet about the category, about the bikes, the electronics, the tires. The support from Brazil is amazing. I will try to do my best to, to, bring, uh, to let them proud. Everyone is more very close to the, to the top guy, but uh, I hope I can score every race in a point. This is my, uh, my goal because uh, last year was a, a bit tough for me. But in some race, uh, I show my potential that we can be in the point. But uh, we know that our package are still uh, a bit tough last year. But uh, this year, we know that uh, we have a better package. Honda's full force has seen the potential. And with the updates in abundance, will this be the year where Honda's seven-year wind drought is ended? Testing was promising. But we'll get our confirmation when the lights go out down under. In the factory Kawasaki team, it remains the same for the lineup. Jonathan Ray slipped to third in the standings in 2022, and now more than ever, he'll hope to reclaim the title he lost two years ago. He has staff changes in 2023. Sander Donkers is his new electronics engineer, whilst Crystal Flambert comes in on a more central role in the electronics department within the team, and moves from top back Raz Gat the Oglu's Patty Yamaha crew. There's a fresh feel for the number 65, but the objective remains the same. This is World Superbike and right now it's as competitive as ever, so we need to, to work step by step with my team. At the end of last season when you know, I could feel that championship slipping away, the, the chance to fight in the, the latter part of the year, not motivation drop, but we were resigned the fact that Alvaro and Ducati were so formidable that uh, mounting a challenge was over. Kawasaki. They haven't been sleeping, you know, they've been working really hard and um, you know, now is the time to put all the pieces of the jigsaw together. I have my brother working alongside me, Chris, really excited about that and we've got, um, we've got new faces inside the guys that I'm really excited to work with because, you know, knowledge, different knowledge, new ideas, motivated people are really, really important in this project and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that. That in itself reignites a big flame, you know, the, the atmospheres are really very good and everyone's um, bouncing off each other. So, yeah, nice uh, nice change for 23. I can fight. I know I'm going to try. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's many guys that can fight. You know, like I said before, Superbike right now is so competitive right down through the, the entry list and further strengthened for next year, you know, with new riders arriving. So I'm looking forward to get amongst it. A far more consistent year for Alex Lowe's in 2022 saw him back to full fitness as he took sixth overall in four rostrums. However, he has eyes on bigger prizes in 2023 and wants to return to winning ways with Kawasaki. Is Lowe's a dark horse to keep an eye on, or shouldn't we be surprised at all? We have got some improvements, and I'm, yeah, I'm interested to see, you know, what, what they are and, and how they. Uh, how they are against the other guys on, on track. Fight for wins, that's the target. I think the second half of last year I was a lot more competitive. KRT's team boss, Gim Roda, has high hopes for 2023 and details Kawasaki's new homologation and how their engine's improvement should help them close the gap to the front and get back to winning ways. We expect um, better performing than last year, is, is our aim because uh, we have been working a lot to improve the, the package. We're gonna make some upgrades on mass production according to the racing needs. Uh, ZX 10R machine is like a flagship of the company. Kawasaki made, uh, made their best and make a small change. I think it's gonna make a, another step. It's not completely revolutionary bike, of course, because sometimes not meaning new is, in, is, is, is better. So we need to use our base bike, which is quite good, and try to improve uh, small steps we need. So let's see if, if, if homologation we, we're gonna do and Kawasaki propose, it's gonna work uh, as we expect. Kawasaki use the actual base bike, introduce certain change on the bike, make new homologation, and then with this homologation, we can proceed and run the, the championship. It's more about on the engine side, chassis side, our bike is quite good, we, we need uh, a little bit uh, improve on the engine side, a little bit more acceleration. So let's see if this can give us a small advantage uh, comparing last year and, and especially a uh, combination of a uh, powerful engine with Ducati with the weight of, of Bautista makes so complex to, um, to win these two, three tens he takes on the, only on the straight. Top speed is a consequence of aerodynamics and a consequence of acceleration on the corner as well. So it's not only power. So let's see if we can uh, minimize this difference this year. There's major news elsewhere in the Kawasaki lineup, and that is that the manufacturer's 2013 World Superbike champion, Tom Sykes, is back on the grid and back 
on the ZX10RR. One of the biggest personalities in the paddock aims her podiums and a first win in five years. Whilst at the Oralac Racing Verdantura Kawasaki team, Czech star Oliver Koenig stays for a second season. It's fantastic to be here back in the, in the World Superbike Championship paddock. Like I've said uh, previously, I've got a lot of fantastic memories here, a lot of history, a lot of good friends. The goal, you know, it's always to win and always be competitive. That's the, uh, that's the desire from going racing. There are some positions where I would like to be, but it's difficult to say because the new guys were, uh, new guys come, uh, super fast guys, the Petrucci, Garner and uh, Dominic Egerter, so I have the respect and I will not say any like prediction of the position. I just want to make the progress. With an engine upgrade being key and Jonathan Ray eager to reclaim the number one plate, Kawasaki's 2023 promises to be intriguing and they conquer their rivals and get back to the top. The 2022 season saw charismatic Turk top rack Razgat Leoglu continue to shine, but the title couldn't be retained. He's back with the number 54 and ready to reclaim the title he relinquished last year. Razgat Leoglu's crew is a little bit different too, as Davide Gentile switches from Jonathan Ray's Kawasaki team become Toprak's new application engineer. Besides that, Toprak wants the title back, but have his demands for more top speed been met? And is he feeling any pressure? Uh, no pressure, not the less, uh, less pressure, but because uh, this is my number, and finally I use my 54 again. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to season now. This year, you know, uh, I am fighting the, also the last lap, you know, I'm not uh, the close the gas because uh, my target this for this season. I'm now excited because uh, I'm, I hope we are start uh, very strong and, and after we will see. We have uh, many new parts and also the, the upgrade the engine and uh, we will see this testing. Uh, okay, maybe not like a Ducati, but uh, I think we are improving and uh, yeah, we will see. This year, you know, uh, many new riders is coming in Superbike and uh, I hope uh, we are fighting all together. Ready for a third season in the factory Yamaha team, Andrea Locatelli once again goes in search of a first race win and the 2020 World Supersport champion is ready for the challenge. Despite a mid-season lull last year, Locatelli could be one to watch this year. We start from zero um, and I don't have a pressure, so I, I need just to to looking forward and to working very well with the team to prepare the season. I'm confident to try to to get some podium and to be to be more front in every in every weekend for sure. Factory Yamaha team boss Paul Denning is keen for a second title in World Superbike, and with the hard work done in the off season, can the team conquer Ducati in 2023? We had a DNF with Top Rack at Mazzana. We would have liked to avoid um, that. Sort of really opened up the points gap at that time of year. I'm not suggesting it was Top Rack's fault by any means, because uh, in my opinion it wasn't. But uh, you know, the Assen accident. You know, Jonathan and Top Rack sort of had a bit of a history of taking chunks out of each other early on in the season, and maybe allowing Alvaro to kind of creep away and do his own thing. So I think both of those guys need to avoid that a little bit. What we can do, as you mentioned, is try and give them more acceleration via improved grip, uh, continue to work on uh, the mechanical side of the bike, of course, uh, engine, engine development uh, as much as we can. Um, you know, but the R1's got so many super strong assets in other areas of the track that it's our job to optimise those areas and give our riders so much confidence that they can take liberties with the bike. Davide's experience is a huge bonus to us honestly speaking um, it's nice to have someone who's got experience elsewhere and got a very deep uh, level of experience in general when you look at the depth of quality in the riders across the starting grid this year um, it's as in a good a health as it's uh, ever been as always with Yamaha it's a quality lineup of independent riders the GYTR GRT Yamaha World Superbike team features one of the strongest all rookie lineups ever seen, with reigning double World Supersport champion Dominique Agata graduating to World Superbike 
and 2021 Moto2 World Champion and ex Moto GP rider Remy Gardner switching to World SBK to fly the Australian flag. Elsewhere, Lorenzo Baldessari also graduates from World Supersport with a GMT94 Yamaha outfit, whilst reigning British Superbike champion Bradley Ray is on the grid for the European rounds with the Yamaha Moto X racing team, and that is an exciting prospect. We caught up with them all throughout testing. I'm very happy to make the step up uh, to Superbike from World Supersport. I think uh, I deserve, after two years, uh, winning the championship. I have a very uh, good uh, teammate as uh, with Remy, uh, the Moto2 World Champion in uh, 2021. Uh, we are both uh, rookies. He yeah, have for sure, uh, on the big bike, a little bit more experience. But uh, yeah, we try uh, to give our best and try to make a good team result. First impressions is really good. I mean, everyone's super, super friendly here, which is nice. I want to take it step by step and understand the class, the bike, and, and the tires more than anything, because they're, you know, there are guys that have been here a few years now. So, yeah, I got lots to learn and uh, you know, lots to catch up on. Yes, the Yamaha one is unbe unbelievable. Uh, very fast. First day was incredible, I enjoyed a lot, just uh, spinning some laps and uh, uh, start everything with the, the new team, new, new bike, everything is new for us. We, we will try our best and uh, we, we can uh, fight for top 10 position. Ultimately, I like to be, like to be around all the, the new guys, um, Agata, Remy, people like that, that, that are their first time into, in World Superbike. So if I can be, if I can be around them and, and obviously yeah, I'd like I'd like to, to finish the year with, with some top fives and, and, and sort of be, be fairly strong. I feel like I'm capable of doing that. With the title slipping away in 2022, will Yamaha's upgrades be enough to see them shine through in 2023? Top Rack Vaz leads the manufacturer's charge alongside teammate Andrea Locatelli, whilst there's four rookies in the independent teams. Something special is on the way in blue. Whilst World SBK is the class that headlines, the stars of tomorrow are already on the ascendance in World Supersport. 2022 was a year remembered for domination by Dominique Agata, who despite being beaten in the first race of the year at Aragon by rookie Lorenzo Baldessari, came good and won the following seven races. Agata's strength saw him take a second straight title at Mandalika, just the third rider in the class to do it. He and rival Lorenzo Baldessari have cleared off to World Superbike for 2023, meaning World Supersport is an open playing field. Stefano Manzi won a race in 2022 as he delivered a first victory to Triumph, but he's now got a new home at the Tenkate Racing Yamaha team. A pre-season favourite, can he deliver them a title for a third straight year, the first time they'll have had three on the spin since their first period of glory days in the mid-2000s? He also assesses his new teammate in Jorge Navarro. Oh, I think uh, he's getting uh, fast uh, from beginning because he's a fast rider, come from Moto2, and we see everybody come from Moto2 who are uh, already fast on, the, on this bike. So I think he uh, can be a fast guy on top uh, already. A rookie in the class, Jorge Navarro has 10 podiums for Moto2 and finished fourth in the championship in 2019. However, the Spaniard now finds himself at the most successful World Supersport team in history for a new challenge, a new home and a renewed charge to the top. I think our target is to, to be very successful and I think I am in the right place for it with Tengate. I think I have the level for it and we will just focus on our work, uh, grow step by step and yeah, let's try to, to go high. Tenkate is the most successful team in this, in this class and uh, when you are a rider you just want to, to have the best around you and, and be ready to win and this is what, what I will have and I will try to enjoy it. It's true there will be pressure but I think I will enjoy that pressure. 11 podiums and third overall in the championship last year, but without a race win. Is 2023 finally going to be Jan on Jew's year? A raft of upgrades and a change in suspension to Olin's are some of the key changes for Anju, 
but he's keeping his feet on planet Earth for the time being. Kawasaki work a lot in this winter and uh, bring right by wire, so which will help us a lot in engine brake. Also, we will have some uh, upgrade and uh, first time we will have a blipper on the bike. We are trying also different suspension. Talking big is not my type of style. Everyone's dream, dream is to be world champion and uh, my dream is also to be world champion. After nine podiums last year and finishing fourth in the standings, Nicolo Bouliga and indeed Ducati missed out on victory, the only manufacturer to do so in 2022. 2023 has big potential, but can Ducati's success spread to World Supersport? For sure will be um, very difficult, but um, this is my second year, so I know all the circuits. Uh, last year I didn't know, I think, four or five circuits. So um, for this point of view, will be a little bit more easy, but uh, it's a world championship, so every, every year is difficult. So. Uh, we have to work uh, very hard. Manzi is with to Yamaha and also Navarro comes to, to Supersport. So uh, they replace the, the, the two fastest guys. So close yet so far in 2022. Bad luck and late errors couldn't be shaken off for Federico Caracasulo. But now with the Altea Racing Ducati team for a second season, the aim is to take Ducati's first win in the class since 2005. Something Caracasulo is all too aware of. It would be great to be the first win winner with this bike, uh, but it's not pressure for me. I will do my best like l last year. Uh, I will try to do less mistake as possible and uh, we will see what happens. The latest rider to add his name to the World Super Sport winners list was Yari Montella, becoming the 58th different winner after his race one victory in Australia last year. He switches to Ducati for 2023 with the Barney Spark Racing Team with the ambition to add to his tally. For sure we are we working for a uh, for fight for the championship. It's uh, our goal. Uh, but in this time at, at this time uh, we need to I need to understand the bike 100% and then push for uh, for a great uh, championship. Another strong Ducati team is that of the D34G Racing Outfit, managed by 14-time World Superbike podium finisher and 2011 Stock 1000 champion Davide Giuliano. One of his star riders is Oli Bayliss, with the Australian set for his second year in the class, whilst his crew chief is none other than Giovanni Krupi. Surely a recipe for success. It's going to be good. The, a lot of the guys in this team have so much experience and uh, yeah, I'm keen to keen to get working with them and yeah, finish, have a good year. The goal, I guess, is to finish pretty much every race how we finished our best race last year. So if we can aim for the top six, then yeah, I'm happy. There are also two fast British riders coming into the field in 2023. Four-time Moto3 Grand Prix winner John McPhee joins the Vint 64 by Bichetti Racing Team aboard a Kawasaki. Whilst 2021 British Superbike champion Taron McKenzie is back on the world stage, this time with Honda, who likewise returned to make it six manufacturers in World Supersport. Both preview their plans for the year ahead, and they're thinking big. Kind of a dream of mine to, to obviously progress from Moto3, and uh, this was my best uh, chance moving forward. I think the whole package, when it comes together, will be a strong, strong team. For now, uh, there's no pressure and no expectations and just take it round by round and, and hopefully fight towards the front at some point. Besides those, there's a pack eager to chase down the opposition. Raffaele De Rosa stays with the Oralac Racing Verdatura squad aboard the Ducati, whilst Bahatin Sofwoglu remains with MV Augusta, alongside rookie Marcel Schrotter, who replaces Nicky Tooley, who in turn moves to triumph alongside another British rookie in Harry Truelove. Reigning World Supersport 300 champion Alvaro Diaz steps up with the Arco Motor University team on a Yamaha, whilst Yuta Akaya also graduates from World Supersport 300 with the Padina Kawasaki team. Adrian Huertas remains with MTM Kawasaki, whilst Valentin Debees is GMT94 Yamaha Supersport hopeful. Adam Noradin joins Honda. 16 rookies, 13 different nationalities and 6 manufacturers, but who will be number one in San Juan?
In the FIM Super Sport 300 World Championship, there's always plenty of reason to be excited, with unpredictability and intense battling all the way through the field. With 2022 World Champion Alvaro Diaz moving up to World Super Sport, it's another land of opportunity in 2023. Jeffrey Bowes returns to the class with MTM Kawasaki, and the 2020 World Champion has his sights on becoming the first ever double champion in the class. Then there's a pack of race winners, including Samueli De Zora, who switches to the Pradina Kawasaki team. Whilst Matteo Venucci returns, staying put with the AD Motorsport Italia outfit. Dirk Geiger took victory in the final round of the 2022 season at Portimao, but moves to the Freudenberg KTM Peligo racing team, alongside Lennox Lehman, who will hope for improved qualifying performances this year after countless charges through the field. Mirko Genai is another race winner from last year who remains in the same team, whilst Jose Luis Perez Gonzalez aims to convert his 2022 flashes of brilliance into a title charge this season. In all, fresh faces take on an established guard as new countries make it a truly international field. 13 nationalities from four continents and across four manufacturers who will triumph from the end of the season. With another exciting year in prospect, we checked in with World SBK Executive Director Gregorio Levia to get his thoughts on the new season and a return to our traditional starting point at Phillip Island. Finally a return to normal and looking forward to, to start this new season. Seems like it's a continuation of the last two years. A lot of uh, quality parity between bikes, riders, but we need to wait to the first race, but uh, yeah, looking forward to it. New riders line up, a lot of, uh, some of them coming from the super sport, some other coming from other championships. It's going to be really, really amazing to watch. Every year is getting better and better, and I could say that to do it better in terms of what the teams and bikes and riders are putting on track, it's going to be quite hard to, to beat that. As always in World SBK, the riders love to have some fun. So we asked them to name just one rider who will be their biggest rival in 2023. Here's what they came back with. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. <laughs> I would say... <laughs> Don't know. All riders. Difficult to choose one. One name only. <laughs> one name. Uh, I think me. I can look one. Top rack, Bautista and, and Ray. I think Bautista is one of the guys to beat. Top rack. Myself. Alfaro is the man to beat. I think top rack. Top rack. You know, Johnny and Alvaro is very strong. Jonathan Ray. Top rack is, uh, I'm really curious to ride with top rack and Johnny. Alvaro, Bautista. Lequona is doing really, really well. <laughs> My teammate uh, Rinaldi. Michael. <laughs> Bautista. He's top rack. My, my teammate because he's the world champion. A new season is dawning. The same drama is waiting. The golden era of World Superbike continues. And we hope to see you along the way too. Join us on a spectacular journey of World Superbike action from the 24th to the 26th of February from Phillip Island, Australia. When the lights go out, it's game on. And you don't want to miss out. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, goodbye for now. <laughs>